Welcome back to Face the State. On this Sunday morning, the candidates for governor are proposing very different ways to fix Connecticut. There's a group whose job it is to study our state and see if they can find the best ways to fix our economy. And with us are two members of the Fiscal Stability and Economic Growth Commission. I think I have that mixed up. You need to catch your name, we've decided, but that's all right. Jim Smith <laughs> and Bob Patricelli, we thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you, Dennis. What is the basic goal in the history of this relatively new organization? Well, the organization started as a, a group of private citizens uh, meeting and saying, our state is going down in flames. What are we doing about it? This is not something we can delegate to political figures. All of us in the private sector have got a stake. And uh, we approached the governor and the legislative leaders in mid-2017 and proposed a commission, a Simpson-Bowles-type commission for Connecticut. And flaming flames is one of the key words there because you have the burning platform. What is that, Mr. Smith? Right, because the goal actually is to make recommendations that will pull Connecticut out of its fiscal crisis such that it does not become a permanent fiscal crisis. And we talk about the burning platform because Connecticut is in dire straits right now and we have a lot of strengths and we can still leverage those strengths, but we need to make structural fiscal changes in order that we can reignite economic growth and get back to prosperity. And that's what the commission was all about, appointed by the governor uh, as well as by the legislative leadership to, as a group of private sector leaders, to make nonpartisan recommendations as to how to address the problem. We have a list of four of your proposals. I know you have others as well, so let's show them to you right now. The first is reduce the income tax, cut a billion dollars from the general fund, tolls, among other things, and to fix the legislature. Those are four we can talk about. We'll talk about the other ones as well. But let's begin with just sort of an overview because there's something for each gubernatorial candidate. They're going to like some of it and they're not going to like the rest of it. But let's begin with reducing the income tax. How much does that hurt the state having the level that it is right now? Well, I'm going to rephrase your characterization. Uh, we wanted to uh, reprogram the state's tax system to make it pro-growth. In order to get there, we need to reduce the income tax okay. to bring it more in line with neighboring states. We need to reduce some other taxes, the, the estate and gift tax, for example. But to pay for that, we're going to have to raise money in other ways. And uh, the principal way to do that is to reduce the number of ad hoc and politically inspired exemptions from the sales tax. So bring some taxes down, but make it up by increases in sales tax collection. What are some of the specific examples of that? On the sales tax side? Yeah, in, certain, you know, in terms of those <clears throat> ad hoc things. Well, uh, in our state, all uh, goods are taxed unless specifically exempted, but all services are exempted unless specifically taxed. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Anything that's a personal good or service ought to be subject to the same tax. So services would be a principal category for uh, going after. Is there a recommendation as to how much the income tax should be reduced? Our recommendation was uh, 18 to 30 percent in different brackets and we wanted it to be material. We're talking about trying to reignite growth in this state and make it attractive again so you're not going to do it by uh, nickels and dimes. It's got to be significant. And that, that's a $2 billion reduction in the income tax. As you know, uh, Bob Stefanowski has proposed getting rid of the income tax altogether. Is that feasible from what you have been able to study? So one of the things we did was the guiding principle for all of our recommendations was the competitiveness of the state. And we concluded that in order to be competitive, you had to lower the personal income tax and broaden that sales tax base. Okay. Our understanding is that any of the proposals with regard to reducing the income tax are dependent on other things happening in order that that process can continue. Uh, and my understanding is that uh, candidate Stefanowski has said that he would like to phase it out ultimately over a period of time, but that that would be conditioned upon, I believe, reopening CBAC, getting concessions such that the spending side of the equation would balance against the lower taxes. If I could go back again just sure. for a second talking about that burning platform, because a lot of times people will say, well, are you sure you really need to do these things? And the answer is yes, because we've lost our competitive positioning. And I'll give you one example. The, gross, the real gross state product in Connecticut has actually declined by 9% in the last 10 or 11 years. 
And a lot of people say, well, we're demographically challenged, so we have to expect that. But if you look at it compared to other states in New England, for example, everyone else is in a positive zone. In fact, without Connecticut, all the surrounding states have improved by about 12 percent. That's a 20 percent factor. That's what we've lost. It's cause and effect of losing confidence in the economy and an unwillingness to open or expand businesses here. And if you take that and say, that off a $250 billion base, we've lost, relatively speaking, 20 percent or $50 billion that would yield revenue at a rate of about 4 percent. That's $2 billion a year that's gone that actually could have solved a huge chunk of the problem that we have. Speaking of talking about billions, you want to cut a billion dollars from the general fund. Let's talk about that. Well, it sounds like a big number, and it is, but the general fund's $20 billion, so we're talking 5%. If, if you add in the administrative and management side of the special transportation fund, the state spends $33 billion a year. So taking a billion out of that 3 to 5%, it's doable. Uh, it can be done through efficiencies, through more effective tax collections. We only collect, for example, 58% of the sales tax uh, through better administrative, fleet management, real estate management, and the like. Let me stop there for a second. So, yeah. so we're only collecting 58 percent. What about the other 42 percent? What's happening there? Uh, up to now, it's been uh, uh, deemed uncollectible or it hasn't been gone after effectively enough. We from think stores or? From, from all of the current sources that are currently paying. Not the, I'm not talking about the exemptions here, yeah. but the covered sources where we're collecting 58 percent. It's massive. hard to get a comparable number of that, but yeah. we think that most states are in the mid-60s, and there are various reasons why it's not economic to go after all of it. But the point is that every 1 percent is worth $75 million. So if you got it from 58 to 62, that's $300 million of additional revenue, which means you have to be able to invest in the technology and the systems that are required to make that happen. And the biggest problem we have is that those investments are being crowded out because the rate of uh, state employee liabilities is rising at three times the rate of economic growth. And that's what's blowing out the unfunded liabilities. And so in service of those unfunded liabilities, we're not investing in um, items like that or in the transportation infrastructure. Let's talk about the next thing in the list, tolls and some gas taxes also, or motoring taxes. What was the word? Sure. So when you're running at a deficit of $2 billion to two and a half billion dollars a year, and it's increasing by about five hundred million dollars a year because of the increasing annual required contributions against those unfunded liabilities, you're really not in a good position to be able to divert investment. So you have to find the opportunity to invest. Connecticut uh, derives less revenue per capita or per road mile or rail mile than almost any other state around it, and is the only state on the Atlantic seaboard that does not have tolls. The commission concluded it's unrealistic to think that we can balance the budget and also raise enough capital to be able to invest in an infrastructure that has been underinvested in for many, many years. And therefore, a way to do that uh, is by tolling. And it'd have to be done, done judiciously. It wouldn't include border tolls. There'd be uh, congestion relieving tolls. There'd be an opportunity to invest in rail as well so that we could get from Hartford to New Haven to Stamford to New York and reprioritize investment. So we'd be more efficient while also raising the capital to invest in the future. Without that, without the backbone of our infrastructure, the transportation system, we have no hope of reigniting the economic growth that could help to generate the revenue to balance the budget. So tolls is, must be done, and the, you know, the Commission's recommendation must, it's <coughs> part of the future? We, we think it's an inevitability, frankly. We know that it's politically extremely volatile right now, and that's perhaps because there was not a plan laid out as to where tolling stations would be or how much uh, tolls would cost. And, and so some planning needs to be done. But the legislature and the next governor need to wrap their minds around doing something here. The fourth thing on that list, fix the legislature. What does that mean exactly? I know I was reading part of it, and, and there's, you would like to look at the length of the session. Should they be longer or shorter? Well, if you, if you really look at uh, structural problems in the state, you've got to say to yourself, how did we get into this problem? How did we get $100 billion of unfunded liabilities and debt way out of size compared to other states? Folks aren't doing their jobs. The legislature has not been paying attention to the economic health of the state, or they haven't been courageous enough to deal with it. So, yes, 
We need longer sessions. Uh, Massachusetts and New York have full year sessions. We can't run this state on one six month and one three month session. We probably can't run the state paying our legislators $28,000 a year. So we got to up our game here and not be afraid to pay for it. So full time legislature, you're thinking? Yeah. And, uh, and increasing the legislature's own capability to analyze problems and supervise outcomes. From what I'd, you, I'd like to focus on another sure. part of that, which sure, is right that ahead. right now the way that we budget is uh, archaic, and we have an appropriations committee that decides how much money they need, and they throw it over to the finance committee and say, you know, get that money. Instead of having an overarching budget review group that um, sets the parameters, sets the priorities, you have to decide what's in and what's not in, and then puts a revenue target on it, and then the appropriations and the finance teams work together to achieve the results. Those are the kind of structural, in this case, administrative and organizational changes that can make a significant difference in how we budget and balance the budget going forward. We're running out of time, so I'll give you just a brief final question. That is, uh, are, are the candidates for governor uh, speaking your language? Are they saying things that the commission likes to hear so far? Let me start on that. Dennis, and that's a central question, and let's extend it to the candidates for the General Assembly, too. What we're getting so far is very partial platforms. They need to get comprehensive, because there are so many parts to this that have to work together. They could use the commission as a starting point. They, have to, they can't accept everything, but uh, the, the platforms are not up to the game that needs to be played at this point. Bob. And, and we want to make clear, too, that the Commission is a nonpartisan group of private sector people who came together for love of the state. Uh, and we are advancing our platform to any and all that will listen. We actually submitted our report in March, and Bob and I have been out on the road for the last six or eight months, and we've made over 100 presentations to virtually anybody that will listen. We've met with candidates that will talk with us about it, because this is the solution that can put Connecticut back on the road to growth and prosperity. Well, Take them together. Well, we thank you both for your time today. We'll definitely have you on again because there's so much to talk about in your recommendations. Bob Petricelli, Jim Smith. Thanks so much. Best to thank enjoy you, your guys. Labor Day weekend. When we come back, we'll take a look back at John McCain and his time here in Connecticut. And we welcome your comments. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.